Hello there, Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and a new card making video. Today I am playing with the club kits from Spellbinders for February 2024. I'm gonna be making eight cards featuring several different club kits. Lots of fun and some things I haven't played with in a while. So let's take a look at the sets I'm using. This is a large die of the month. It has this large Easter basket and things to fill it up. I'm also gonna be using the Glimmer Hot Foil Kit of the month, which has a large daffodil hot foil plate and two sentiments dies to cut out the sentiments as well. And by the way, that does come with a roll of hot foil. Then we have the clear stamp and die set of the month. Look how pretty that arch is with the flowers in it. And it's got so many sentiments in there and dies to cut everything out. The arch die for the flowers is so cool. Can't wait to show you. Okay, then we have two embossing folders of the month, the 3D embossing folder, which is gonna give you that really deep impression, and then the standard embossing folder of the month. I love having both. Then we have a better press plate. This is the fluttering into spring, no, flutter into spring. It has a floral image, a hummingbird, and two sentiments, and there is a die to cut out the hummingbird. It's so cute. All right, then we have our stencil kit of the month. This is a four-piece stencil set, and there's also a mask in there, which I love. And then I have the wax seal of the month. Look at, it's an oval. I love that. It's Lily of the Valley and it does come with wax beads. And this time it's the sage color that are like matte finished. Can't wait to try them, but I don't actually use them in today's video. I use a different color to match my card. And then I wanted to talk to you about the Deluxe Caboodle. If you like all the club kits, there's two more that I didn't even show you here, the small die and the stitching die. You can get a free extra item if you get the deluxe caboodle, which this month happens to be this better press plate set with another hummingbird. It's so cute. So if you want to get all of the club kits, you can get the deluxe caboodle and get a free something. Last month it was a die set. So we're going to jump right in now and we're going to look at the large die of the month. I like to do the large die first. It is like my OG of club kits. So I'm putting together the basket. There's two bottom pieces to the basket. If you cut them together, you're going to get that woven cutout piece. And then if you cut the outline by itself, you get a piece to back it with. And there's a fine detail piece that goes along the top of the basket and then a handle. And you just glue those pieces together to create your basket and you can have the handle as long or as short as you like. There's a tulip configuration here. We've got the actual flower has three pieces. You're going to layer those up. Then you've got the stem and you have three different leaves. Kind of gives you some options on how you want to configure this. And then we have some lily of the valley flowers. At least I think that's what they're called. <laughs> and you can see there's little um, circles at the end of the vines. That's where you're going to put your dot of glue to add on the flowers. And those are just so pretty. They match the wax seal of the month. Then we have a carrot with a little greenery piece. Look how cute. Like to me, this is like the cutest element that goes with this. I mean, besides this bunny, but the carrot just like kind of is that little extra something that's unexpected. So when you die cut out the bunny, it is going to have all the pieces you need to make it look like the bunny is like climbing into something. And the die that is separate is actually the backing for the feet, like the piece that you're going to cut out from pink paper. And then you see the little ears, how they have a circle at the end. Anywhere you see that on a spellbinder right usually means that's where the glue goes. So let's take all those pieces now and make a card. First, I'm taking that white basket and I'm turning it pink because that's the color I wanted to do. I am ink blending right over the top of all of those pieces glued together with my spun sugar distress oxide ink and a blending brush from Trinity stamps. I love these short brushes with the big bristles. They just make the work of ink blending so quick. But when you want smaller areas, then you do a smaller little brush. So I have a smaller brush and I'm adding um, some shadows with picked raspberry. So it's quite bright. And then I can go back with my larger brush and just go over the top of this and soften out the lines between the colors. And it is perfect. 
perfection. Look at that. I'm going to do the same exact thing with the handle and I'm starting with the lighter color first always and then I can add in where I want those shadows and I'm going to do that at the base of the handle where it would meet up with the bottom part of the basket and then I can just blend those back and forth until I get the look that I want. Now for the leaves, I die cut this from green cardstock, but I still wanted it to have a shadow. So I'm using these smaller, like tiny little blending brushes from Spellbinders and adding some Lucky Clover ink, and that's going to give them a nice little shadow. I'm going to do that with several other things like the carrots where I'm adding some spiced marmalade just to one side of the carrot, and it just helps bring it to life with having that shadow and highlight. For the little flowers, I have wilted violet that I'm adding to my really light lavender cardstock and look how it just makes these I don't know come to life with that shadow on there I love it and you can see I put a dot of glue on the each on each of those little circles at the end of the stem and I can easily pick up my petals and glue them down I'm telling you having the right tools makes everything so much easier um, we have a lot of tools in this hobby don't we a lot. <laughs> Tell me your favorite tool below, one you can't live without. One of them for me might be these blending brushes from Trinity. Like I go to them time and time again for quick coverage on ink blending and stenciling. I use them here to add color to my tulips. I did two different colors of yellow, keeping the darkest color at the base, and they're so cute. Now, when you glue these together, you want the wider of the two petals on the right and the skinnier one on the left. And you can have the petals be more open or more closed, just depending on how you like it and get different looks that way. For the bunny, I'm adding just a touch of Lost Shadow to be a shadow on this bunny because I want it to appear mostly white. So I'll just add that here and there and it just helps, you know, make it look more alive. And then the pink behind the feet are is a really super light cardstock. You'll see how it looks more pink once I add the white layer. And what is cool about these particular things is that there's etched lines to show you exactly where you're going to glue all the little pieces. So it's easy to do and it makes it quick. So then I'll add the ears just by picking up the bunny and setting it down on top of the glued ears. Just like that. And he's so cute, ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna build a little bouquet of flowers here. And this is what I'm then going to put in the basket. So I'm just gonna build it up and it looks a little wonky there at the bottom, but that wonky part is gonna be inside the basket. So I don't need to worry about it. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna add on those Lily of the Valley flowers. Now, one thing I wish I would have done is when I glued on the second piece, I wish I would have kept it a little bit higher up but it is what it is. It's going to be fine. And the pink basket, the yellow flowers, and the little pop of purple, it's so springy. And I'm telling you, after um, a snow shower this morning, I am ready for spring to come. We had a little bit of nice weather, but it was just like a joke because, wait, it's still winter. Here's the snow. <laughs> So I am ready for walks outside and um, flowers blooming and all the things. All right, for my handle, it is a little thin. So I decided to go ahead and back it with a second die cut to make it a little bit more sturdy. I put glue on the ends and then just set my basket down, making the handle as long as I wanted it to for this piece. Next, I'm going to glue in my carrots. Look how cute. Like they just make this. I love that it's not all flowers in the basket. That's what I love about the carrot. And then I'll add the little bunny. It's so cute how he looks like he's hopping in. And I have a little opening there on the left hand side of the basket. So I decided to add a fourth carrot there just to fill it in a little bit more. And I love how that turned out. I need a scene to set this on. So I'm going to take some tumbled glass distress oxide ink. I'm going to ink blend it down this panel of cardstock, but I'm not um, getting a really heavy hand, just keeping it light so it's a light blue sky. I'm going to do the a Easter Egg Hunt 3D embossing folder. I did spritz it with water before running this through, and it gives it that um, look where maybe it's a little bit cloudy in the background because some areas are more blue and some are more white like clouds. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of splatter to this. And what I'm using is Perfect Pearls. I just mixed it with a little water and splattered it on. I have this border dye here. Um, Spellbinders does have this dye. It's been updated, so it's not green like that dye was. Um, I'll link it for you below. I'm just adding a little bit of Twisted Citron here to lighten up this dark green. And then once that is 
dry and ready to go, I'll add it on to the bottom of this panel, and that's where my basket's gonna sit. You gotta have a little ground for your basket, I think, for my scene anyway. And then to finish it off, I wanted another tulip just to go right across the bottom of the basket, and I really wanted a pink tulip there because I couldn't decide in the beginning if my basket should be yellow and my tulips be pink. So I decided I could still do a pink tulip and add it there at the bottom of the basket. And then I added a little bow made of twine to the handle to make it a little bit more festive. And now it's time for the sentiment, which says Happy Easter. It's arched and I wanted it on some coordinating pink cardstock. So I did a little ink blending on there with my blending brushes that still had ink on them to stamp out the sentiment. And it is from the clear stamp of the month, um, Lily Arch. So you can see here how I stamped that out and you see right there the the stamp is arched I didn't do that it comes that way and I love it it's perfect for so many things um, besides the stamp set that it goes with that arched flower stamp I can put it near the handle on my basket and it's going to follow along the arch there too isn't that fun I think it's so clever and I think I will use these um, in lots of fun ways because of that arch. All right, I'm adding this on to my A7 card base. So this started out as a 10 inch by seven inch piece of cardstock that is scored at five inches. So that's an A7 size card. I love making the size of card and it seems perfect for the large die of the month oftentimes. So there's card number one, love that basket. Okay, for card number two, we're gonna do a fun technique with one of the stencils. This is the spring stencil backgrounds. I'm gonna take out this stencil right here, take my five and a half by four and a fourth inch piece of cardstock and tape it to the back. Then I'm gonna bring in some Versamark ink and pounce it on and fill in this entire background with Versamark ink. This ink is very sticky, but it is also clear. And I want that because I'm gonna go over the top of this with something I haven't used in a long, long time. And that is pan pastels. These are artist quality pastels. Like people paint with these. Like it looks like a painting, but it's pastels. They are buttery and delicious. Now I did let my Versamark background set up for just a few minutes because if you go at this right when it's super wet, you can smudge the Versamark ink. So you want to let it set for just a minute and then it's going to be perfect for rubbing on these pastels. You need the littlest amount. One pan of these pastels will probably last your lifetime. <laughs> I'll find a link to where um, you can check out these pan pastels. I've had mine forever, but I just love the look because it sticks to the Versamark, but also leaves a little bit in the background. All right, to dress this up, I am gonna use the Fluttering Hummingbird Plate. That's the one that comes in the kit and caboodle and the Better Press of the month that also has the hummingbird. So I want the two birds. I'm gonna ink them up right there on my Better Press system with the black Better Press ink. And I'm using the Spellbinders Better Press paper in cotton. And I just ran that right through my dye machine. The dye machine is gonna press those plates into the paper and transfer the ink and you'll get a really cool impression into the paper. I'm inking them up again and then I'm just gonna rotate that plate so I can get two more hummingbirds there at the bottom. And there I've got four hummingbirds to work with. I mean, why waste the paper, right? To color these up, I decided I would bring in some colored pencils today. I had them out from a previous project and I was just enjoying using them because again, something I haven't used in a long time and I tend to mostly reach for my Copic marker. So it was kind of fun to test these out on this cotton paper, this better press paper, and they actually worked pretty good. You know, I wanted to be able to get a little bit of a blend between my colors. I have two different shades of blue that I'm using there and two different shades of green. I'll also bring in some yellows eventually, and they actually did blend pretty well. Now my kind of tip for coloring with colored pencils, although I would not consider myself a professionalist, I start out with a really light hand. Then I can build up the color as I go and add in the shadows. But if you start out with a heavy hand and really um, add a dark layer, you're not gonna be able to blend them. So I color in little circular motions with a really light hand and just go over it 
to intensify that color and darken it up. So I'll bring in a second yellow here to add a little bit more darkness to the belly of the hummingbird, but I have to say these images were a lot easier to color than I thought. You can just Google some images of hummingbirds and you have so many options. There's even solid colors of hummingbirds. So lots of fun to be had coloring these guys up, but they're so beautiful by themselves. You could actually use them without any color at all. They're just gorgeous images. So there they are ready to go. I'm gonna die cut them out because each of these do have a coordinating die, which is so helpful, I love it. So they're die cut out now and they're gonna go on that beautiful background I made with the pan pastels. But I also want a sentiment here, so I'm gonna do sending a fluttering hello. And I'm gonna do this with white craft ink on just regular cardstock that I feel matches the blue I use in my hummingbird. So there it is. I'm gonna make sure that's dry and then I'm just trimming it out with a paper cutter and cutting the end at an angle. I layered that on a second piece that I also cut at an angle to give it a little interest and that's gonna go on to this panel. And I kind of laid out the hummingbirds where I thought they would go in the end. Um, that just helps for visual referencing. I do that a lot. I'm sure you guys do too, it really helps. And then I decided to pop up the hummingbirds with some thin foam squares, and there they are. So pretty. And then I'm adding this onto an A2 size card base. So this one is four and a fourth inches by 11, squared at five and a half. I'm adding on some rhinestones. These are from Trinity Stamps. I get most of all my embellishments from them, but they're clear with colored glitter in them. Look at that. They're so cool. And of course, Trinity has them in like every color. I'll try to link everything I use for you below so you can check that out and see for yourself the cool embellishments there. All right, I am using a shimmer pen to get that iridescent look that hummingbirds have. It's hard to see on camera, but it really adds like the magical touch to these hummingbirds, I think. So there's card number two. I hope you enjoy the pan pastels because I'm going to use it on my next card too, but in a different way. So here's card number three. We're using the Swirling Blooms embossing folder for our background. So I ran that through on a white piece of cardstock. As you can see here, this one's also going to be an A7 size card. I'm going to rub my Versamark pad right over the top of this. Now I'm using a light hand and just trying to get the surface of the paper, but Pan Pastels is also going to color the cardstock itself, and I know that, so I'm taking that into consideration and actually using it to my advantage when making this background. So wherever the Versamark is, the Pan Pastel is really going to stick to that, and the color is going to be a lot more vibrant. And wherever it's just cardstock, it's really soft and muted. So I thought I would do a background similar to how I did on the last one with, you know, one end being lighter and the other end being darker and blending in the middle. But once I got going with this, I thought it would be really cool for the background to have that brighter, lighter blue, and then the raised up areas of the embossing folder be the dark blue. So I kind of went over the whole thing and did a little bit more heavy hand with the light blue, and then over the top with a lighter hand, I did the dark blue. So the raised up areas are that dark navy, and the background is more of that brighter royal blue. So I just had fun with it and played, but other another thing you should know is that it's good to set your pan pastels, and I use this workable fixative spray to do that. I spray it outside, just shh, I mean, really easy and then it dries really fast, and then I don't have to worry about any pan pastels coming off on the recipient's hands or my hands, because then you can smudge it on something else. So that's something I like to use with my pan pastels, and a, it a little bit goes a long way, so that bottle or that can will last you a long time. Okay, so here is the Arched Lilies stamp. It is gorgeous, and I love that it's in the arch, and what makes it is the die, you'll see. Okay, for this card, I decided to use a card sketch from Kendra's Card Challenge number 13, and the sketch I'm using is number 15. So the last one, I'm gonna kind of adjust this from an A2's sketch into my A7 size card. So you'll see that come together, but that was my inspiration for the layout of this card. Now for this image, I am gonna use my Copic markers. I started out with my darkest color, which is Y17, then my midtone Y15, and my lightest is Y13. I am gonna use a colorless blender there on the very edge just to soften out the line of the lightest color because I wanted the petals to kind of fade to white. 
So there it is, and that's how I colored all the petals. Very easy to do. I even colored out the little buds. Now for the stems, I am gonna use two colors, but they're so thin you could get away with one. This is YG67. I'm putting this wherever the stem is coming out from behind a flower or where it's coming out from a flower. And then I'll finish them out with my lighter color, which is G7, and this is really easy to do. And all that's left now is the center of the flowers. And I went with a really like yellowish green color, the YG03 for the centers, and that's it. These images are colored and they're pretty easy to do, but they look really elegant. So for the next step, this is like my favorite part, I'm bringing in the dye and I recommend you really get a feel for how this die fits on there before you tape it down and go because it cuts around everything so tight and I love that it leaves all that open space all right I have this arches die set I'm going to mount this on but before I mounted it I really thought it would look cool backed with vellum so I just glued the piece down let it dry and cut around it and now I'm going to love it even better mounted onto that blue arch, but I wanted it popped up. So I'm always telling you how I cut things out of lightweight chipboard that comes from packaging. Well, it comes from packaging like that piece right that I just showed you that had foam tape on it. So I cut out two of those, stuck them behind my arch, and now I'm ready to pop this up onto that blue arch layer. Now, this arch isn't the exact size or like layer for my arches, but I think it works out pretty good. Spellbinders does have a lot of arch dies, so check that out when you're there. All right, the sketch has some diagonal lines on it, and I really liked that, and it was a way for me to bring in some more yellow. But I am not so great at just eyeballing and putting those down where the top angle would match the bottom angle, so I took a two by two square, and I cut it diagonally, and I'm gonna use that as a guide to glue down these pieces, and then I can do the same thing on the other corner, and I know they're gonna be like put down at the same angle. <laughs> so that is what I found super helpful. I thought it might help you too. And then I can just cut off those XX, excess pieces. <laughs> and then my corners are ready to go. Now you see they have two blue strips on the side. I wasn't sure I wanted to add those even though they are in the sketch, but in the end I did end up using them. All right, so I added that to my card base, popped up my arch with some foam tape, and it is looking so good. I brought out a image, no, a sentiment from the stamp set and stamping that out with some dark blue blue ink. I'm going to stamp that a few times to really intensify that color. Die cut it out. It says, thanks for your friendship. And I am going to back this with a couple extra die cuts to make it thicker. I just am liking that look on this card where it's just a tiny bit raised up. And there's those blue strips. I'm thinking about it and in the end decided, yeah, I think that's going to bring everything together. There you can see the tiny little lines. Now, there's also three embellishments on this. And so I'm bringing in these I think they're luscious lemon baubles. They um, have a, like a pearlized finish to them. So perfect. They're not air, like see-through, so the, the color of the cardstock is not going to affect them. I thought it was the perfect embellishment to finish off card number three. Okay, we're jumping right into cards four through seven. I'm going to kind of make all of these together because I'm going to create some backgrounds with my gel press. This is a gel press, even though it's pink. It's quite stained from lots of use. It's been well loved. I'm going to ink up my gel press today with some dye inks from Altenew. I have, I believe, maple yellow is my first color. Picked some of the ink up with my brayer and brayered that on. I'm going to clean it off and then I'm going to do coral berry at the top. So I'm going to have two different colors. They're going to kind of meet in the middle and create a little bit of an orange color. So what I'm going to do next is bring in a stencil from the Stencil Club. I liked this one with the opening in the middle. And then I'll just lay down an A2 size panel. So five and a half inches by four and a fourth inches and press that down to pick up the pattern in the background. Look at this. It's so fun to do this on a gel press. So very pretty. I will definitely be making a card with that one, but there's a couple I don't end up using. All right, so now there's still ink wherever the stencil was 
on my gel press. So I'm gonna brayer that to just help pick up all the color and not get my fingers too inky. And some of the ink transfers on the background, which is fine. And if I don't like the front side, I can always use the back side. But I will end up using this one. So that's like the leftover ink, but there is still ink on my stencil. So I put it face up this time, gave it a little spritz of water, and I'm gonna pick up whatever ink I can off of that stencil. Um, and I will say, this is the one I don't use. It's a little bit too subtle for me. But if you were using darker colors, you might still get a print right here that you would love. So I wanted to make sure and leave this in and show it to you because it's a great technique to use. There it is. Okay, next, um, I was just having fun. So I decided to put my ink pads direct to my gel press, just smear it on so I could get a little bit darker coverage. I am gonna use my brayer to smooth out the lines of the ink pads, but you see I barely went over it. So there's still gonna be a few lines, but that did not stop me. I'm cleaning the ink off of my brayer and making an even another background that I would definitely use. So let's see what we've got on the gel press there. Thank you for the helping hand of the brayer it makes such quick work of pressing that down um so you can see there i've got some lines but i will still end up using it i'm taking that background where i cleaned off my brayer and i'm actually going to stencil right over the top of this and i thought i'd try my hand at having the gel press hold my stencil for me and it kind of works there's just not a lot of stencil for it to grab so i did use a little piece of tape there and other than that i did really good so i am bringing in some snowfall grit paste you can see i love this how it's almost empty i just love the look that this gives you in the end i love the texture and i thought it's a little bit grungy and that would go with my little bit grungy background. So I spread that all over and I did use the mask in the middle so I could leave that open. And look how cool that is. It'll dry up so nice. But we'll get back to that one. We're going to bring in the Daffodil Spray, which is the Glimmer Hot Foil Club Kit. And this is Speckled Aura Foil. I'm going to cut it with my quick trimmer from Spellbinders, making sure it's big enough to cover the entire piece of cardstock. And then I'll put my plate on my preheated Glimmer Hot Foil system pretty side up. I'll put my foil pretty side down and my cardstock pretty side down as well. I'll press the timer and put on the cover plate. Oh, I did use a little bit of tape to hold this in place, and then I'll add the plates and press the timer. Once the timer goes off, I remove that dock, run it through my dye machine. The pressure and the heat are going to transfer that foil onto the cardstock, and this image is so gorgeous. I truly love it. I know I'll be using that one again soon. Okay, let's do some more with more of our background. So this is the one that picked up what well, the ink that was left on the gel press after taking the stencil off. And I am going to hot foil my better press plate. So this is the floral image that comes in the better press um, fluttering by... I forget the name of it, fluttering by with a hello, something like that. Um, yeah, so then I just used Aura Foil this time, not the speckled Aura. And this Aura Foil is probably my most favorite. It is um, gold with like a touch of iridescent color. It's my favorite. And you can see there, hot foiled on there. It's a very detailed image, so this little more subtle background is a good pairing. Okay, did you know that Spellbinders has solid plates? So I'm taking my solid circle putting down the foil that I just peeled off of the last um, panel, and I'm gonna hot foil that, and it's going to transfer that image, um, but the image itself will be white, and all around it will be the foil. It is so cool, and it's in the shape of a circle. I love this, so I'll save that. We're just doing a bunch of hot foiling and then we're gonna start putting all the things together. So for this panel, I'm gonna do the hummingbird. And I thought I was just gonna cut it out and have the hummingbird be colored by the background, but that's not what ends up happening. So I actually have to shift gears. Um, you can see here the wing goes just outside the circle. So I decided that looked pretty cool and I'm going to use it like it is. So I didn't want to waste the foil and I had that solid circle out. So I'm going to do the reverse foiling with this hummingbird and see what I get. And whenever I do solid hot foiling, I always put an extra shim between my plates. So that's why you'll see that yellow piece of paper coming in and out of my plates there. I can die cut that out and it ends up being so gorgeous. Look at that. Okay, I needed to pop a little bit more and I couldn't 
wait to do it. I had to do it now. Um, and then I'll get back to the hot foiling. But I use the coral berry at the top. And then at the bottom, I'll bring in some yellow. But you should know if you don't already that foil resists the ink. So some of it may sit on top and you have to buff it off with a cloth, but it will resist the ink and not ruin the hot foiling. Look at that love it. So this panel, I decided I'm going to go ahead and make a card with it. So I'm going to add the second hummingbird. I tried to fill it in as best I could. And there I've got the two hummingbirds in the circle. And I'm going to make a card out of that one. I'm going to make a set of note cards actually with the four four of the backgrounds I made with my gel press. So here I did the reverse hot foiling with that hummingbird as well. I'll die cut it out. It's fabulous so fun. Okay, I have a bunch of hot foil plates from the Better Press plates and from the hot foil plate itself. I'm going to hot foil them either on my card bases or some of them I'm going to hot foil and die cut out. And so I have my sentiments ready to go and now I can start bringing all of these things together and making some cards. I cut out the right hand side of my um, daffodil paper there and then I'm going to create a card with this. The sentiment is getting backed with some extra die cuts to pop up and the daffodil panel itself I'm adding a pink layer behind it so the pink will pop on that right hand side and then both of those are getting mounted to my A2 size card base just like that and I'll add the sentiment and that makes note card number one done which is actually card number four if we're counting from the beginning. <laughs> now make sure you stay tuned because I'm going to be giving away this set of note cards kind of like I did in January's video if you saw that. Okay on to my next note card it's the one with the hummingbirds hot foil directly on the panel. I'm going to color them up with colored pencils just like I did on my first card with the hummingbirds but this time I'm using the pinks and the yellows to go with my background. So pretty and these are more easy to color than you would think. Like I was kind of intimidated at first because hummingbirds are like so uniquely colored and so pretty but it actually ends up being pretty easy and I think that it is really fun to color them and bring them to life. <clears throat> so I'll do both of them with those colors and look at that when you turn them in the light. So gorgeous. I'm adding that to my A2 size panel. I scooted it over to the side and then on the left I added a little strip of gold mirror cardstock to finish that note card off. Lovely. Okay, note card number three features the Better Press plate hot foiled onto my gel press background. And then I'm ink blending over the top of my sentiment just like I did with the but the not the butterfly I knew I was gonna do that the hummingbird <laughs> which I am popping up there so it's flying towards those flowers I added a shadow layer of gold cardstock to my sentiment it's gonna go there at the bottom and this whole thing is gonna be on an A2 size card base with a white border all the way around I am gonna add some confetti bits from Trinity here that are pink with a little bit of iridescent finish everything is so shiny on this card um, and these embellishments are good for a simple note card because they're flat I love that okay so there is a card number three of my note card collection I believe and we have one more so this is the the one where I hot foiled the negative piece and made it um, a circle shape. I die cut that out. I also die cut out a vellum circle and I'm going to layer those up on this extra panel which you didn't see me make because I actually made some before I recorded just to kind of get a feel for what I was going to do. So I actually had two panels that look like this. Um, I added a shadow layer to the hummingbird and made my sentiment thicker and I'm gluing that down also which this one that says you brighten my day is from the hot foil set. Then I'll add this to a pink panel. So I have a little pink showing at the top and the bottom. And then I'll add that to my card base. So I have a little white showing at the top and the bottom. And that is note card number four for a total of seven cards. So there's the four note cards I'm giving away. So all you need to do is leave a comment. You'll be entered to win and I will announce who wins them in my next club video for March where I show all the club kits, okay? And I have the other set that I showed in January's video to give away today, I'll announce the winner. All right, remember this panel where I did the snowfall grip paste? We're gonna turn this into a shaker card because you know I love shakers and I couldn't leave this video without using that bunny 
on a shaker card. So cut out the center, added a window sheet. Then my bunny's getting a little bit more gray added to it this time than I did on the first bunny. So he's kind of a grayish bunny with some white highlights. And then he's gonna go on the circle. So it looks like he's gonna jump right in to this shaker, which I'm gonna make just crazy full. You'll see. For the background that's gonna go behind my shaker, I'm just using a white panel and the Perfect Pearls. So you just mix the Perfect Pearls with a little water and then splatter it on just like that. So I have this little mix here. I had already used some, I didn't have very much left, so I thought I would add to it and make my own mix. I have all these microbeads I just got from Twiddler's Nook, which is an Etsy shop that has embellishments, and in hindsight, I would not have mixed these three colors together because they're a little bit translucent, and so when you get too many of them together, it kind of gets a little muddy, like ink blending would if you mixed these three colors because they are next to each other and they pick up each other's kind of color in a way. So I wish I would have just left it with pink, but I added some sprinkles, just clay sprinkles in all those colors and look at, it's just like Easter extravaganza. It's overboard and I love it. <laughs> so I'm putting foam tape all the way around and I like to do these little angled pieces when I do a circle. I don't want, um, for this particular card, I don't want those shaker bits to hide anywhere. Sometimes I like my shaker elements to hide down somewhere. I have to tell you, if you love shaker cards, you should definitely check out my Facebook group, which is called Shaker Card Addicts, and come join us. We share our shaker cards. You can share your shaker cards there too. You can get inspiration. It's just a fun place to connect with people who also love shaker cards. So I'm using that Happy Easter again, embossed with white on yellow cardstock, and I stuck it right down to the window and then added this to my A2 size card. And I decided it has so much going on that I'm gonna leave it just like this. I love it. It's so fun. It feels a little bit retro Easter to me. So those are my eight cards. I hope you enjoyed today's video. You got some inspiration, but guess what? That's not all I have to share with you today because I'm going to take my note cards and I'm going to put them together and put them in a little package. So don't leave just yet. Um, I'm going to show you that and we're going to feature the wax seal of the month. I just wanted to give you a look at all eight cards that I made. So here's that wax seal, Lily of the Valley love this one because it's an oval shape. This is the first club kit of wax seal, wax seal club kit that has come oval. You know, I, I know this came with the green wax, but it just didn't match for me today. So I'm using these coral pink wax beads. They have a pearlized finish to them. And I'm going to let that melt and we're going to press this right into that wax. It's so easy to do, especially with this wax seal kit. Everything I am using besides the candle came in a kit from Spellbinders. It's awesome. It, it just set me right up to get going. So there's my little wax seal. It is really cute. All right, I'm gonna make a topper. You saw I put all the cards and four envelopes in a clear envelope. And then I'm going to create a topper that is, starts out as a piece of cardstock that is five inches by five inches, scored at two and a half. I'm using one half of this stencil. It Look how cute that is. It's really cute. And then I'm going to dress this up. First thing is to um, emboss my sentiment. So I'm using um, the spring greetings instead of happy Easter. I did use another sentiment. I'm gonna emboss that with gold and that's gonna help it really pop off of this background. And then we're gonna create another um, little splattering. <laughs> if I had only saved all my things to splatter at once, I wouldn't have wasted so much, but it's really the tiniest bit of pearls to make your splatter. Then I created another tulip for this little topper and I wanted to show you it's so easy to bend that stem because it's thin you can just really gently curl it and then you can have it face a different direction if you want I love it all right so I glued my stem down I'll add my yellow tulip there and then I even cut a little leaf for the stem and I chose to go with a little lighter green than I did on the basket and I feel like it goes better with all of this I stuck my wax seal there on the stem and then I can just use some um, tape runner to stick the bag to my topper and then I'm gonna staple it, but only to the back. I don't want those staples on the front. 
And then when I'm ready to shut it, I'll add some more tape runner to the top panel and just fold it over. And the person who receives it can just like kind of rip that envelope right out of that topper. And you could even use that topper to make your own card, right? So now this is ready to go as a gift to one of you. Here's the one I made last month that I'm giving away to Mom05Able. I will message you and let you know that you won. And I really would like to send this to someone in the United States. It gets very expensive to mail this out. So let me know where you're from when you leave a comment and I'll just see if I can work it out. All right, so here's all the cards. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Maybe you learned something new. Maybe you want to try something new after watching like pan pastels or the gel press. Um, maybe you haven't colored with your colored pencils in a while and you want to give it a try. But I hope that you are inspired and I thank you so much for stopping by. I'll see you guys very soon with a new video and I will announce the winner of the giveaway of today's note cards in my March Club Kit video so you'll know when to look for that. I'll see you all again very soon. Happy stamping. Bye.